It's Plymouth Art Weekend 2018 and this is Art at the Athenium Theatre. I see your dark eyes, yes all I see your dark eyes, yes all I see your dark eyes. everyday reality. Uh, my starting point are masks, so this is an Inuit mask from Alaska. Uh -huh. Do you do a lot of travelling now? No, I actually I came across these in the freeze. Uh, freeze masks was up in London several years ago and they just blew me over. Uh -huh. And so I've done a lot of work on, on the culture and what they represent. And it's such a different world view from ours. And then that feeds into these paintings here, which are more uh, conceptual, I think. I don't have an idea of what I'm going to paint when I start, and then things come into my mind. For example, this one, the composition is based on a painting by Walter Sigurd yeah. in the Tate Gallery. And as I was making that painting, that composition came to mind. Uh -huh. So some of it's like subliminal abstracts. Yeah, yeah. Just as long as you, you're you're open-minded and you begin, then there's enough work that I've seen, experiences that I've had, and it just feeds into the work. And suddenly, for example, here, this is a uh, represents uh, a, group, a scene from uh, Agamemnon. Yeah. Uh, where Clytemnestra, I think it is, uh, murdered him when he came back from his wars. I didn't plan to do this, but I happened to be reading some of it at the time and it just feeds in. It's a great experience, a great way to be, great way to be an artist. So you're into abstracts? This is, this is primarily what I do, but I, I do the masks as well, I paint masks as well. Partly for the technical challenge, but also because of the culture and the, yeah, it just, just feeds my imagination. Were you part of uh, a group, an art group in the Athenium? Then? Not in the Athenium, I'm a part of Rhizome, yes. which is an artist collective based in Union Street at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are graduates from PCA plus other artists from around What's Plymouth. PCA? Uh, Plymouth College of Art. Oh, right, so, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 Uh, and we realised that when you leave college, I graduated two years ago, yeah. it can be quite lonely when you come out on your own. And so we got this it's quite network strange, of city people. Like that because they come at the arts big time, but you're still very isolated in, yeah. in the creative industry because everybody wants to, to work independently, which, are, yeah. which also holds back creativity. Yes, and you need that interaction. You need other artists to feed off, to, feed off, to yeah. look at your. So we, we do crits. All of this work has been critiqued by fellow artists in Rhizome, and their insights help to develop 
the technique and what I as do. As long as it's not over influenced by the, you know, uh, no, no. constructive input. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, again, at PCAD, PCA, um, you get taught, not taught, you experience really good crits. Yeah. So how to be supportive, how to inform the artist, but not railroad them or tell them what to do. Yeah. Um, and in, you know, through a crit, I would say you know ninety percent of what's said about your work, you say, well, that's interesting, but it, it disappears. But that ten percent really does help inform. At the end of the day, it's just just somebody else's interpretation. Yeah, but it's 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 a way of informing, giving a different view. Because as an artist, I get very I get very into my work, and yeah. having a group of people I trust say to me, actually, Terry, have you thought about this? Or that's reminiscent of. Yeah. It's just a way of, of keeping you know, keeping me connected to other people rather than just disappearing down a tunnel. So you like me went into the creative industries later on in life? Yeah, yeah I had a business career. Doing? I was a management consultant based so in London. So this is quite relaxing. Yeah, well, no, ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but it's, so I went from a very high-powered business career, Yeah. but you knew your place, you knew what success was, because it's all measured in numbers and so forth, and you had a team of people around you, and suddenly going into, into college, yeah. you know, I had people around me who were 18, 19, much younger than me, much better technical artists. Open minds not being constructed yeah. into the ways of thinking by the system. Yeah, yeah, so, it's, so you have to make that whole transition, and that, was, that is you still... To, you have to start listening up again. Yeah, yeah, and it's... And it's um, it's a hard transition to make, but it's, yeah. So have you been doing art all your life in some form or I realised that I wanted to do art when I looked at my bookcase and I had art books from around the world. I'd fly to Australia and come back with books of uh, local galleries, local exhibitions. And I was thinking, Terry, it's okay reading this stuff and going to the galleries, but actually engage with it. So I started doing um, lino cuts. So I was working, but doing lino cuts. Yeah. Very basic. And that just fired my imagination, and I thought, right, got enough money, pay the mortgage off, move down to, to the southwest, go to art college, and look back. So that explains why you moved to Plymouth. Yeah, well, I actually live in Exeter. I, well, it's I, not there, actually. But I it, prefer Plymouth. It's kind of as a city, even though it pushes the arts. Yeah. Because yeah. of the way it's run. Yes. It's still very over-controlled. Yeah. And unless it goes, Exeter is totally different. It's a vibe, and it's a lot more open. But it doesn't have... I, I beg to disagree because I find it doesn't have, for a painter in particular, it doesn't have a painterly culture. Lots of painters around, but they're more into the performing <laughs> arts and the university sort of drags them off in a particular direction. Yeah. So I love Plymouth. I, I, I think creative, there's creative field in here, but there's not, not an art market in Plymouth. No. It I mean, it's, it's, it's not the as. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, so uh, yes. Um, I'm, uh, this, it, it, uh, and that's, you've got to earn money from your work yeah, yeah. in the creative industries. Yeah. And so you have to go to Exeter where people that's where the money is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And a lot of Plymouth people don't actually shop in Plymouth because it's too, um, too backwards in a lot of yeah, no, right, okay. and they're controlled, uh, which drives people into suburb towns where people will spend more money. Uh -huh. And the rich people of Plymouth go to Exeter, which they won't spend yeah. in Plymouth. Yeah, the number of people I've heard they don't, they don't say, I go up to, I like going up they to Exeter. They don't want to be part of the pipeline culture of Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I won't go down that route, but it's, it's, te years, it's so. telling that, you know, that massive new development has destroyed the, the bus station and all the stuff around there. And it's going to be another great shopping centre, I guess. Well, I mean, the rest of the city is clapped, so it's not feasible. And, yeah, and it looks a monster anyway, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. All the, uh, I, 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 um, don't want to get into it. I get into politics naturally because of uh, I'm a, in the creative industries. If you live in Plymouth, you're still being stifled. But all the uh, buildings of character that survived the Second World War have been demolished under an excuse by the council uh, since the Second World War. And that uh, new Bretonside building is a, is a monster to look at when you come into the city. Yeah. It's just a square box. But if you look, the thing that struck me when I moved, when I started coming down here to, to PCA, because if you walk around, you will come across old buildings. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you'll come across semi-derelict old buildings, which is brilliant, because you can go inside and that. look around. I was in Lisbon, and, and, and Cascades just across from Lisbon. Uh, there's lots of derelict buildings, but not just derelict buildings. There's graffiti all over yeah. them as well, because they're in the middle of nowhere. 
uh, and it's just uh, very spiritual because you can sense that there's, uh, you know, the ghosts of the artist are still there uh -huh. doing uh -huh. the painting, and they were because the, at the top end of the um, the quarter of a mile stretch of buildings that have been in and out of, there's some young people still doing graffiti art, and when they saw me, they they just dissolved into the environment. You know? Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, I was in Belgrade uh, last year, no, uh, earlier this year. Again, they're doing a lot of, a bit like Plymouth, destroying a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, with a lot of money coming in from Russia and other places. But they're sort of in this, in the interim stage where there are a lot of derelict buildings. Um, and it will cause memories of the, the Yugoslav war. So it's very resonant. It's got a very particular vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but derelict buildings are brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Have you got a website? I have terrychannel.com. There's art on Is there. Is that double N? Or is oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Double N, E, double L. Uh -huh. uh, there's art on there. There's also, I write about art. Yeah. So there's stuff about the work that I do, philosophy, Heidegger, and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Thanks very much. Very wor worthwhile looking at. Worthwhile looking I'll at. Try and do that. Thank <laughs> you very much. Thank you very much for your time. You can contact the Athenian Theatre and Plymouth Arts Weekend on Facebook. Music on the video is by Phil the Glass with great thanks. You can find him on Facebook and hear him busking in Plymouth, so give him lots of money. This has been Chris from the Field Video 2018. You can contact me at ccsphoto12 at hotmail.com and if you can help to sponsor my videos, you can pay by me at ccsphoto1 at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my videos.